I'm currently working on top of the Empire State Building as a senior software engineer. I've been an engineer for the past four years. In this video, I'm gonna give you a very clear, laser-focused, no BS roadmap to become a full-stack developer in the era of AI. And I've also created a master Notion template with all those steps so that you can use that as a guide in your journey. You can download it through my newsletter, link is below. The first thing that you will need is the very basic foundation of how websites are rendered. It's HTML and CSS. You can think about HTML as a skeleton of a body and CSS as the skin and the clothes and the hair, basically the overall look. HTML is really the basic structure of a web page. So if I were to build a page with purely HTML, it would look something like this. So you see, it's just like text, titles, images, and links, and that's it. CSS is what adds styles to your page. So if we take the previous web page that we had and we add a layer of CSS on it, it would look like this. So you see, it's like the colors, the positioning, the animations, the overall look of the website. Those two languages are quite easy to learn. Actually, there's not much complexity in it. It's mostly like descriptive languages. Some people even argue whether it's real programming languages or not, because basically you're just describing the page that you want in a specific syntax that you need to learn. One good resource that I recommend to learn is Code Academy. What I like about them is that it's very interactive. As you're learning through different concepts, you're directly applying them. You directly code inside of your browser. It's super interactive. And you'll see that it's a resource that I keep recommending across different chapters of this video but because it's a good one. Once you have learned the foundation of HTML and CSS, I would recommend you to build a little project. You can build a portfolio website for yourself, try to make it a little interesting, try to make it funny, but don't spend too much time on it. Legit, maybe one or two days is enough. The nice thing about a personal website though is that it's gonna give you an advantage when searching for a job. It's gonna make you stand out. And also it's something that you can reuse for the rest of your life. Now to make one thing clear, to build a personal website using HTML and CSS is just for learning purposes. I would never build a professional looking website using that. That's just dumb. You're gonna waste a lot of time fixing some annoying CSS bugs that you won't even need on the job most of the time. There are so many tools that allow you to build a website super quickly. They're extremely easy to use and they allow you to host the website online. One of them is called Hostinger. I've partnered them in this video to show you how easy it is to build a professional website in minutes. Go to the link in the description, hostinger.com slash codebender is gonna send you on this page. Hostinger is always running great deals. It's a very affordable hosting provider. Right now it's the Black Friday deal. I personally recommend you take the premium plan. It's ideal for personal projects and portfolios. It allows you to create up to 100 websites. It has a lot of storage, comes with a free domain, which is very useful. And also it has a free email domain, so it's gonna help you look a lot more legit. You know, when Everyone else is gonna use their school email or their personal Gmail. You're gonna have something that is a lot more professional. If you need more capacity on your plan though, then take the business plan instead. It's actually their more popular option and it will give you access to some of the advanced WordPress features. Once you select the plan, you will get to this screen. I recommend you guys take the 24 or 14 months plan I would just take 48 months because I know I'm gonna need this forever. You also just save the most money like that. You scroll down, create your account, then below enter your payment information. Don't forget to enter the coupon code CODEBENDER. Check this out, it's gonna be even cheaper now. 10% off. Look, I'm getting 4 years of web hosting for just $107. That's crazy. You know, back in the day when I was purchasing my first hosting, it was with a different provider. I paid close to that for just one year of hosting. And it didn't have some of those bonuses like a free domain and other things. So that's a very good deal for four years of hosting. After you finish the payment, it's gonna send you to your dashboard and then you can start setting up your hosting. Hostinger has a nice onboarding that makes it super easy. Here, pick the AI builder, you'll see it's, it's magic. First thing you should do is claim your free domain. Pick the website domain you want. I'll just pick Zorbeck the Codebender. Zorbeck is my first name, the Codebender is the name of the channel. And always pick .com, it's just more professional. Perfect, the domain is available. Now in the AI Builder, I just describe what I want. An epic website. Okay. All right, let's do it. So it created the base of the site for me. Now what I need to do is just add all my data. So I'm gonna replace all the pictures, I'm gonna replace the text, and I'm gonna tweak some of the colors too because I have some ideas. Like I'm thinking of making it like a dark theme. <laughs> Check this out, 10 minutes and I'm done. If I had to build the same thing from scratch in HTML, CSS, try to make the website responsive and everything, I would waste hours on it. Here I'm done in a few minutes. Like I said before, I don't want you guys to spend a lot of time on HTML and CSS because most of you will only need to know the basics of it. 
that's it. So you want to move to the next step of the roadmap as fast as possible. That's why go to hostinger.com to start building your personal website quickly. Do it now because it's the Black Friday deal, you'll save the most money like that. So if you know you need it, don't postpone it to later. Now we're moving to the next step of our roadmap. It's where you will learn your first programming language, JavaScript. If you're creating a character and HTML is like the skeleton and CSS is like the skin and the clothes, then JavaScript is the muscles and the nerves. It's what makes the body move, what it makes it react and interact with others. JavaScript is the most popular language on planet Earth right now. It's extremely powerful. It has a very wide ecosystem of tools and frameworks and libraries. It's super versatile. You can use it on the front end, you can use it on the back end, on web and on mobile. You can handle complex tasks. It's a very, very powerful language and it's the best language, in my opinion, for beginners to learn. In terms of resources, Codecademy has an excellent introductory course to JavaScript. That's the one that I recommend you do. After that, I want you to build a project. You can build a little game, for example, like a Pong game. In terms of time, it's going to take you from a few weeks to a month. It depends on your level, on prior experience and your affinity with that language. But yeah, I would say like a month. In terms of time it takes to learn, obviously it depends on how much time you're willing to put in every week. It depends on your prior experience, your affinity with the language. I would say on average it takes from a few weeks to a month to be able to learn it. JavaScript is powerful, but by itself, it's actually not that powerful. It's truly powerful because of its ecosystem. And one of the most important libraries you need to learn is React. If we take the previous example where HTML is the skeleton and then CSS is the skin and JavaScript is like the muscles and the nerves, React is like an exoskeleton. It allows you to empower all the moves that you're doing and it allows you to do things that will be extremely difficult without it. But in programming words, what it allows you to do is to create a single page application. So it's applications that have building blocks called components that are reused across the full app. You have a dynamic state, you have pages. It's super interactive. It's a very dynamic application. It will really help you improve your speed and productivity. Again, for the resource, Code Academy is an extremely good one, but I would also recommend you reading the official React docs. It's pretty well written and it's a resource that you're going to use just throughout your journey. In terms of projects, I've actually left a lot of projects on the Notion guide, but one thing that you can do is you can build a chatbot, you can build a startup idea generator, you can build a gift idea generator, and a lot more ideas you can just check out on the doc. And for the time that you need to learn it, I would say if you have mastered JavaScript, you took the time to learn it, you did like the Code Academy course, I think a week or two weeks will be enough to learn JavaScript and start working on your first projects. Step four, learn how the internet works. And you might be asking like, wait, I know how the internet works. I use it every day to go on TikTok. Bro, this is not what I mean. I mean truly learning how internet works. And what I mean by that is when you open a web page, what happens behind the scenes? What is HTTP? What is DNS? What is SSL? What are all of those terms and concepts? And if you have no idea what that means, it's all right. I'm going to explain you in very simple terms. You can think about the internet as a mailing system where the IP is your home address. The DNS is like that friendly postman who knows where everyone lives. HTTP is the standard delivery protocol. HTTPS is just a secured version of that delivery protocol. Course is the regulations that determine who can send packages. And SSL is like the seal that ensures that no one else reads your mail. That's it. Again, I've linked a few videos in the Notion Guide so you can be familiar with it. But one resource that I will recommend you is to check the Mozilla Web Docs. It's very complete. It has a lot of information about all those concepts that I mentioned. In terms of time, it won't take long to learn, maybe like a day or two, because you don't want to go too deep into it. You just want to learn the concepts. Just read about it and then you know what it is. Step five, understand the command line. If you want to become a full stack developer, you have to master your terminal. It's a super powerful tool. It's like a Swiss army knife. You can run apps, you can install dependencies, you can debug, you can edit files, you can do so many things. If you go really far in it, you could legit not even need to use your mouse anymore. You can do everything in your keyboard, run any commands that you need. But you don't need to go that advanced. Just learning the basics is enough. For the resource, just use Code Academy. Man, at this stage, they should sponsor this video. Like I gave them all this free marketing. But the reality is that it's a lot easier to just use one resource for your full journey. And, and especially a good one like this one that is super interactive. It just makes things a lot easier. Once you've learned those basic commands, go on cmdchallenge.com. It's like a little game that will allow you to practice those commands that you learned. And in terms of time to dedicate to this, I would say just a few days. Maybe two, three days is enough to learn the basic commands. And then as you go, you're going to keep learning new things. Next step is a super important one. It's Git and GitHub. Git is a system that allows you to track 
changes in your files, to collaborate together with other engineers, to see previous versions of your file, to roll back, and a ton of different functionalities that it has. GitHub is a website that basically uses Git on the web, so it makes all those features accessible through an interface where you can store your code. It's the most popular website to store code and to work collaboratively with other people. So it's extremely important if you wanna go and work in a company or work with others. It's as important as air for a human being. Git and GitHub is the equivalent for a developer. I remember, man, what I used to do in the past before I knew Git and GitHub, if there was like an assignment or something, like a group assignment, and I had to sh share some code, I would share it on Google Drive. And it was so messy, man. Like we were four different guys working on a project together. We we'll all share our code on Google Drive. We would all have to compile the code together somehow, sit next to each other, say like, oh, I changed this code, this line, and then I did a change in this line. And it would be such a mess. It would spend hours and hours just trying to merge code together. GitHub makes it extremely easy. You can very easily see changes and merge code together. It's specifically meant for that. For the resource to learn it, Code Academy, you already know that. For the project, literally take the apps that you build in the previous steps and push them to GitHub. That's the best thing you can do to learn. In terms of time, I would spend just a few days to learn those basics because you have to understand, Git is something you're going to be using every day. So you'll have plenty of time to practice more. It's enough for the step to just get the basic foundations and then you move to the next step. Step seven, learn backend development. People throw around a lot of languages like Python, Ruby, PHP, C++, Java. Forget about all of them and focus only on Node.js. If HTML is the skeleton, CSS is the skin, JavaScript are the muscles, React is the exoskeleton, then Node.js is the brain. It's what handles all the complex logic of your app. And it's hidden. You cannot see the brain. It's in the back end. Node.js is a back end JavaScript runtime environment that allows you to run JavaScript on the server, which normally you cannot do, right? Because JavaScript can only be run on the browser. But Node.js allows you to do it on the server. The advantage is that you don't need to learn a new language. It's all JavaScript, which means that everything you learn in JavaScript, you can still apply to Node.js. And it's super popular. A lot of companies use it. In my opinion, it's the go-to if you want to learn full stack development. For the resource, you're going to do the Node.js course on Code Academy, And then for the project, you can literally take any of the projects you did in the past and try to add the back end to it. In terms of time, it's going to take you a week or a few weeks, depending on how intensely you do it. Once you have learned that, it's time to learn the next piece that you need, which is the databases. There are two popular types of databases. There are SQL databases and there are no SQL databases. You want to learn the difference between them two and when to use one over the other. To make it very simple for you, if your data is structured and there's relations between the data, then you want to use a SQL database like PostgreSQL. So for example, let's say you're tasked to organize a wedding and you have a list of guests, you have a list of their meal preferences, and then you have seats where they're assigned to across different tables in the wedding hall. This is structured data because each guest is related to a meal and is related to a seat. So that's why you want to use SQL for this. Now, on the other hand, if you want to plan a surprise party for your best friend, you don't know exactly which are the guests that are going to come and you don't know what they will bring. So you have uncertainty. And because of that reason, it's best to use NoSQL a database like MongoDB, for example. And the advantage of a structure like that is that it's going to be a lot more flexible for the future as you scale and handle like more uncertainty. Learning both of those databases is going to take some time. I usually recommend learning only one and I recommend the first one, PostgreSQL. Because it's very powerful, a lot of tech companies use it. That's what I use too also at my company. For the resource, you're going to do the Code Academy PostgreSQL course. For the project, it's very interesting now because you know front end, back end, and you just learned about databases, so you can do full stack projects, which means that you can add those back end functionalities to whatever app that you have built before. You can add a user authentication, sign in, create user profiles, store their data, save their preferences, and a lot of those things. This is going to be very exciting for you. In terms of time, again, dedicate a week or a little bit more depending on how involved you are. And now we're moving to the most exciting step in my mind. It's step nine, AI integration. This is a step that most likely all the other roadmaps that you're looking at, they don't have it because it's so new and you cannot not learn this. Bro, it's like refusing to become a super saiyan when you could become one. Doesn't make any sense. You have to learn different AI APIs like OpenAI, that's the creators of ChatGPT, they're the most famous ones. I would start with them and I would learn prompt engineering. This is also super important to know how to prompt properly. The main resource for this, in my opinion, is the OpenAI documentation because since it's so new, there aren't many very good courses that have been built on this. And right now, the OpenAI documentation is 
where you'll find the bulk of the information. So that's where I would recommend you checking first. But there is still one course that I was able to find and it has step-by-step -step instructions on how to build an AI application. I've linked it in the Notion guide so you can check that on out. As a project, now it's very interesting because you can build so many different projects. You can build a speech-to-code converter where you literally imagine an app where you say to the app, I want you to build a portfolio website for me, for example. And then the app, the same way as if you ask that to ChatGPT, is going to write the full code for you. It will transcribe your voice and turn into the full code for the website you want. That's one project idea. Another idea is that you can build an Elon Musk chatbot. So it's a chatbot that has the personality of Elon Musk and you can interact with him. Then you can build a gift idea recommender. So you input the personality of the person you want to offer a gift to. It's going to suggest you a full list of personalized gifts for that person. And in terms of time to invest into this step, I would say after a few days or a week, you're going to be able to build the applications. But bro, spend as much time as you need and as much time as you can to learn those things. There is no limit there. This is the only step where I say no limit. Invest as much time as you can. And after that, you can continue your journey. The code bender never stops learning. He never becomes obsolete because he's always on top of things. You can learn TypeScript, you can learn SCSS, you can learn Docker. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Obviously, AI, you're going to keep learning that because, bro, right now, there is a huge opportunity in the market through AI. Once you have gone through the steps in this video, you have an enormous potential to make a substantial amount of money and to change your life. Bro, don't let this opportunity slip. Use the roadmap that I've created as a guide for you. You can use it throughout your entire journey. You can access it in my newsletter. You'll, you'll be able to download it there. It's going to be the first email you'll get. There is also a bonus step in it that I've written. And it's something that, in my opinion, the reason why so many people who learn to code give up is that bonus step that I've laid out. So I really recommend you check it out. It's something that most people don't do. So please do it. The advantage of that Notion document also is that I can update it a lot easier than updating this video. So as AI evolves and as the market evolves, I'll be able to update that document. So keep referencing that one, okay? Let me know in the comments what your struggles are. I'll read all of them and I'll try to improve the roadmap based on that. Now, Codebenders, you have everything you need to start your journey. But if you're curious about my own journey, how I went from writing my first line of code to becoming a full-stack software developer working on top of the Empire State Building, you can check out this video.